Hello everybody and welcome to this magical video where we're going to talk about magical things and you guys are going to be all excited and then you guys, whipple, you will, you will find a way to fuck me because um, that is how this goes and I will explain, I will explain the effing in a little bit here. <clears throat> But for those of you who watched my video of the tour of Burbank, sort of, and um, the tour of the Iliad Bookshop, which, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff, um, I made some purchases there and picked up some new Iliad bookmarks, different colors than I normally have, so I got some green and orange, yay, yay, yay. And also, they have COVID hours. I don't know if those are still what the hours are, but these bookmarks are so gorgeous. A fine selection of new and used and rare books with emphasis on literature and the arts. There's our address in North Hollywood. There's our phone number. And those are the different hours. And that is the website. And that is who did the art. But... Let's talk about the elephant in the room here, guys. Let's just do it. I got my ears lowered yesterday, obviously. You could tell. Ow, 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 ow. Um, I am not thrilled with my haircut. Um, first off, it was horribly expensive at a barber shop. Allegedly a barber shop. And... It's not what I asked for. And I was not facing the mirror, so I had no idea until it was too late. And so I have this little tiny fade that's about this much fade right at the fucking top. And then it just is poofy. So I'm probably going to have to fix this myself. <clears throat> oh my god, that's even worse. But they did do some beard trimming, which looks pretty okay. This apparently is called a Sharpie. And I asked for, um, you know, just some movement. You know, like that. And he said, oh, a Sharpie? And I said, I don't fucking know what the hell you call it. I'm not a fucking barber. I'm not a hairstylist. I'm not a fashionista. I'm telling you what to do. Whatever it is called, do the thing that I said to do. Um... And he spent a, a long time. When you're at the barber shop, how long do you spend in the chair? Okay. At this barber shop, I was in the chair, forget this, one hour and 15 minutes. I was about to lose my mind. Okay. <clears throat> Books. Okay, so I bought something, and if you watch the last video, you'll know that I said... I think I spent a little too much money on something, um, but we're going to get to that in a minute. So when I was checking out, the guy at the counter, when I came up, I only had this one little thing in my hand, and he's like, oh, did you find um, what you were looking for? Did you find anything good? And I put it up, and then he went, oh, yes, you did. And um, that's how that conversation started. <clears throat> and then he's like, um, did you find everything you were looking for, though? And I said, well, sir, I was wondering if you had a collection of any little magazines or those old zines or chapbooks um, of those old, um, like, literary journals, like Olay, Wormwood Review, Hearst, Targets, um, The Outsider... Anything like that. And he was like, ooh, gosh, I don't know. And then this other dude over on the side, he's like, you know, we might have some on the top shelf over in the anthologies. Okay. So I'm like, I don't know where that is. And he's like, oh, I'll take you over there. So, and literally it was on the top shelf. 
and he had to climb a ladder. And you'll notice in that video, there's a, maybe I'll put it in here, there's a shot of him going up a ladder and a cat jumping off. What I didn't catch on camera, which is what scared the ever-loving shit out of me, he was moving the ladder, and as he's moving the ladder, and you saw that aisleway, there were like books out like this far, probably like this, whatever. There were books out, so you have to go up the ladder and then reach really far. But as he was moving the ladder around, a fucking cat jumped from somewhere, I'm assuming the top of a bookcase, and jumped on top of the ladder. I thought the entire bookcase was falling when I saw the cat move, because um, I didn't realize it was a cat at first. And so I like went like this, and then it was just a cat on a fucking ladder. So I like composed myself quickly, hoping nobody saw... Um, but yeah, so that was fucking ridiculous. Um, so he goes up there and he's like, yeah, I think there's some stuff up here. And he's like, oh yeah, here's Oink. Now Oink, <clears throat> this one is from 1983. This is out of Chicago. And um, these were really fucking cool. And honestly... Like, say what you want about this, but for 1983, this layout, this color scheme, this is so ahead of its time. Like, this wouldn't become the norm for things for, like, another four or five years. Because a lot of you are going, oh, yeah, I've seen shit like that before. Dude, this is 1983, okay? Like, this is very much, like, an 87, 86, maybe even 88 before no one gives a shit about this i'm like geeking out like a fucking madman right now okay um so he handed this to me and um these are the people who are in this um if you want to pause it and look at that um cat hair uh i don't like cat hair i'm allergic to cats god damn it see cats are amazing creatures and I love that they just kind of do whatever the fuck they want and that will leave you the fuck alone if that's how they want to feel that day. And then sometimes they want to snuggle you and it's relaxing at petting a cat. But I'm horribly allergic. So I go through these periods where I'm like, if I touch that cat, my eyes will swell like sheep fannies. And I won't be able to breathe. But then I do it anyway. And I'm like, I'll just wash my hands after. Everything will be fine. And then next thing you know, I look like Martin Short in that movie where he got stung by a bee and he's on an airplane. And he's like, I'm fine. And um, yeah, so whatever. So this was a super cool find. Um, and it lists in the store for $2. Okay. So keeping this in mind, I had already bought something. And, but when I looked up the ladder, I saw all these stapled spines. And I was just like, oh my fucking God, stapled spines. That means these are old, low press things. This is exactly what I'm looking for, right? And he's like, D are you comfortable on the ladder or do you want me to just hand stuff down to you. I'm like, I, I got it, I'll handle it. So he gets off the ladder, and then I'm sitting here, already my hands are full, in flip-flops, climbing a fucking ladder in a bookstore. So let me show you some of the stuff I found. Look at how fucking cool this is. Lady Churchill's Rosebud Wristlet. Okay? Now, they had a few of these. <clears throat> and I picked this one because I just liked the cover. I thought the cover was cute and funny. Um, but what I really like about this little magazine here is that this was shipped like this. So we have a little postmark date right there. Okay. That, to me, this is like such extra ephemera. It's so fucking cool. I don't like that they ripped this off. And the funny thing is, a bunch of the other ones they had there, 
um, didn't have the two address ripped off. But like what they would do, they would print these out and then just tape the sides. Okay, and this is how I used to want weird masks to be, but um, I was doing um, paper covers, and I didn't feel comfortable putting tape on paper covers. Um, this is like a thicker card stock, so this is pretty cool. <clears throat> so this is what they have in here and who they got. looks pretty good the thing that's funny is is that there was a bunch of there were ones of these that had ursula k Le Guin in them and when i looked at like three of them and they all had her in it i just assumed she would be in every issue not in this issue but like there's these awesome ads look at that so cool oh these are just amazing looking. Look at all of this, dude. It's just, oh. And the size is odd. I just, I'm really, oh, and there's some other covers that they have. Stapled fucking spine, dude, look at that. I, I just, this is just a beautiful, beautiful fucking magazine, dude. Oh, I love it fucking love it then I picked up this little beauty Epoch a quarterly of contemporary literature look at all these names Philip Roth you say oh okay oh oh okay okay three dollars a cop or three dollars a year 75 cents a copy what year is this oh this is fall 1955 wow fall 1955 bit of sun damage on the spine Look at that. This has a ton of ads in it. The contest for our Aaron Gold is the Philip Roth story in here. So that's what's in here if you want to take a snap. Ugh. There's not as many ads in here as in the next one I'm going to show you. This is what I thought that one had on the inside. So this one is number eight of the Evergreen Review. Okay, now I don't think this is the same Evergreen um, that was the magazine, um, American Magazine. But this one has so many ads in it so many ads in it look at this and they have this cool little artwork running through the whole thing it's fucking hysterical ads i love old ads dude Ugh. dude oh look they made it inside somewhere the holy barbarians Okay, and so here is what we actually have in this issue now. And if you look at the bottom, there's a letter from Leroy Jones. It's just, there's so much cool shit in here. William Sororian. Um, what else we got here? E.E. E. Cummings. Jack Kerouac. There's just, there's just a ton of cool shit in here. Look at this guy. Go, go, mobile. New concept in modern transportation. Goggos. Oh, not go, go. Sorry. Radio's most humorist. What the fuck? All right, whatever. So I got all that shit. Um, all of those books right there... I didn't realize it until I paid. And if I would have known this, but like, I know it now that I'm thinking back and seeing the signs on the wall and shit. But I got those four books for $2. $2 in total for those four books. 
fuck. I would have fucking ate that fucking place up. <clears throat> okay, so now the the big reveal. Okay, because this... Oh, I need a drink. I quickly, when I got home, I put it straight in a bag. I read it and then put it straight in a bag. Okay, so what is this thing you speak of, sir? <clears throat> so I was going through their poetry section, which is just one bookcase, which is, for the size of that place, it's fucking shocking, and it more so it's sad that that's all the poetry they have there. But out of any bookstore I've ever been to, the poetry stuff they had there was miles better than poetry I've seen anywhere else. Okay, so they had tons of chapbooks, stapled spines coming out everywhere. Some um, books were just like folders of broadsides in like a plastic bag. I was just like, I, I was completely like losing it. And I kept grabbing stuff and on, holding on to it and then looking at other stuff and going, oh, so I had this big stack of books that were like uh, $4, $5. One thing I had was $10, and I was like, oh, God, do I really want to spend all this money? I just had to pay my fucking car registration, and now I have to get a fucking smog check. <clears throat> and I was just like, I don't know what to do, Jesus. And then I found it. It was the smallest book I saw. I'm going to get it out right now. What the fuck is this? Blue Nose was 50 to 1, a racetrack story by who? Jack Michelin. Now, Jack Michelin, for those of you who don't know, um, is categorized with the Beats. And um, there are quite a few um, Bukowski stories that involve him and stuff like that. And he is one of those poets that I feel like probably should have been bigger than he was or more popular than he was but because of his attitude about not being accepted the same way a lot of the other beats were i think that was kind of his downfall um the the negativity on that side of it um and him not being afraid to fucking say so kind of thing is probably where that came from anyway back to this so this is a very small book and i don't know if it was put out by two bucks press or if two bucks is what they said for it yes it, there is a stain on it how much did you pay for this small square of like six pages stapled i paid $25 for this. $25? Are you out of your mind? Copyright 1992 by Jack Michelin. Why on earth would you pay $25 for that? I'll show you. It is signed by Jack Michelin. And some strange drawings. Maybe a child came in. Um, someone's name is Eileen, I think. It was signed, it looks like, on two different dates. Um, unless September 5th, 1992. And then someone tried to copy that. <clears throat> Maybe that says, I'm Eileen. And then they just drew a bunch. Okay? So, signed. Jack Michelin story. About... Uh, being a degenerate gambler. This is what it looks like on the inside. The story is okay. Um, it's very... Um, degenerate, I guess is the best way to put it. 
Um, and then it says um, Jack Mitchell in San Francisco, April 1977 through July 1992. So I don't know if that's how long it took him to write this story. <laughs> but um, at the end of this book, there's a... Or the end of this story, there is kind of like a hidden metaphor. And um, I personally, okay, it's going in and it will probably never come out again. <sighs> okay, I probably, I mean, I typically don't like my metaphors hidden in a way that you have to like, sit there and wrestle with it for a bit and go, what the fuck? Like, because this seems very straightforward. And then you think about it for a little bit and you're like, wait a second, was that straightforward? Was that different? Is that what I think that is? Um, but the story was fun. I understand the story a great deal. And um, it touches me. So this is... One of the prizes of my collection. Um, signed, Jack Michelin. Little book with rusty staples and a fucking coffee stain or beer stain or something on the back. Oh, my fucking God. So this little fucker... Oh so fucking happy with that like this is like geek vill for me right now <sighs> okay so um in all of this stuff now how like earlier in the video i said you guys were gonna fuck me now and um the reason why i say that is because after i did the first city lights book um the first city lights uh review video for that anthology there were a few poets in there that I was surprised that I liked. And so I went on Abe and um, put a bunch of these books in my cart. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll pick that up on Friday. Like, I don't want to do it right now. I'll pick it up on Friday. Horrible fucking mistake. Because a lot of these books were very cheap. Some of them even had free shipping. I go back on Friday to make said purchase... Books are sold. Sold, 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 sold. And I go back and I start looking through for um, similar titles. And now, the only ones I could find are like three times the worth, of, or three times the price of what they were before. Some of them aren't even up there anymore. And um, so now I'm sad. Because I tried to do a service, put a video out for you guys to enjoy... And then you guys beat me to the motherfucking punch and get some books that nobody wanted before fucking three weeks ago. Ugh. Anyway, so me saying this, there will be some of you who are in the Southern California area who might like this kind of shit and go and try to clear Iliad out of the things that I'm talking about. Now, the other thing I'm going to say about this is is that the only stuff that I left behind, I left because there were either multiple copies of, or they were so in the weeds that I don't know if anyone besides me would give two shits about it. And I bring this up because with the Iliad before, and this is before I was doing booktube, so I don't know if this is gonna change anything, but I would go in there and like with like Nick Carter, I would go in there and be so scared that people were going to buy these Nick Carter books that I left behind. I would buy tons of them. But then I would, like, go in and notice that the shelf, like, I'd go in two weeks later and the shelf is exactly the same. No one had even touched it. Like, the books were exactly how I left them, okay? So I'm hoping that this might be the same thing. But also, I would love people to find beautiful zines and beautiful little magazines and want to, like, get them and touch them and feel them and play with them and the whole fucking thing, you know? So, um, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm torn because I want all the good things for me. 
and I don't want you to have any of them, but um, it would also be good if you guys did, because then that whole world um, would be more palatable for more people. So I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn. I'm like um, fucking Natalie and Brulia. Okay? I'm torn. <sighs> so anyway, um, that's the haul. Um, I'm geeked out beyond measure. Um, signed fucking Jack Michelin, dude. God damn it. So anyway, um, love me, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. You know what? Wait, wait. Stop. Don't hit next. Don't go to the next video yet. Poetic Anarchy. Next week. Be there or be dumb. Okay? So, you know what to do. Hit that join button. If you haven't subscribed already, slap that subscribe button. And if you haven't liked this video yet, make out with that like button. Do the things. Do the things. Thank you.